What is happening, my friends? Today, we're gonna talk about how we make coffee at camp. So let's get into it. So there's plenty of videos on the internet that talk about different ways to make coffee at camp. Um, I'm not gonna do like a five ways to make coffee at camp because I'm sure you already know about them. Um, I am gonna talk about uh, what we use, uh, which is a pour over um, and why I like it over some of the other options. So first of all, let's talk about coffee prep. Um, before we go out on a trip, I grind my coffee at home. A lot of people will tell you, you should grind your coffee out there right before you brew it. And that is definitely a better way to do it. So if you got a nice grinder, got a nice hand grinder, um, definitely do that. Uh, I have not invested in a nice hand grinder yet. One, because I don't really notice a terrible difference uh, if I pre-grind it versus when I grind it fresh. And to add to that, uh, I'm not that worried about that at camp. I am worried about getting a good cup of coffee, but I'm not worried about it being the perfect cup of coffee. Before we leave, um, I grind our coffee in a Baratza Encore. Um, it's a very good, pretty relatively uh, affordable um, beginner option for coffee. Uh, at home, I typically use a Hario V60 and I use a fellow electric kettle to make pour overs for Kim and I in the morning. Um, when we're out at camp, I bring our Kalita 185 um, and I also have the Kalita 185 filters. It is a flat bottom uh, pour over cone type of thing. Um, the reason I like to use this one is it is a bit more forgiving when it comes to um, pouring technique. So the reason a lot of coffee people use uh, gooseneck kettles is because you can get a very precise pour. You can pour exactly where you need to pour. You can regulate the flow of water. Um, all that stuff is really important when you're making a cup of coffee. Um, when we're out of camp, uh, I'm not that aware of that stuff. I'm not trying to be perfect. So what we use is the Kalita 185 and I've got this little um, GSI kettle. And as long as you can you know, have some touch and, and be pretty careful with it. It works out pretty well for us. Um, I, some of my favorite cups of coffee have come from this setup here. We buy our beans locally, uh, usually here in Portland. Some of our favorite roasteries in Portland are Deadstock Coffee, Heart Coffee, Upper Left Roasters, Kova Coffee. There's a few more out there, but those are some of the ones we regularly buy from. Let's go through all the gear specifically. What I use as a catcher, is our Snow Peak French Press. I bring a French press because <clears throat> if we ever happen to run out of filters, or if I'm just feeling a little less attentive to the coffee that day, I'll use the French press to make some coffee. Um, this one I bought for backpacking, but I keep it in our um, car camping kit because it is plenty enough for both Kim and I. So um, it's sort of that, you know, classic Snow Peak titanium, it's got these little flip out handles here. Very nice little French press, very lightweight. And that's why I bought it for backpacking, but it works super well for our car camping kit as well. So that's what we got for the base to catch the coffee. Um, like I said, we have this uh, GSI kettle. Um, I'm not sure how much it holds. It's enough, it's, it's pretty big. Um, and then I have a coffee scale. I have a Hario coffee scale here, but I keep this one in our uh, camping set. It's just, it's a Taylor, just a basic random kitchen scale that I bought probably from Target at least five years ago. Does the job super well. Um, now you might be wondering, why do you need a scale? When it comes to making a really great cup of coffee, um, measurements are super important. You wanna measure your uh, coffee grinds. You wanna measure the water that you're putting into your pour over method. Um, so the ratio that I like to use is a one to 15. So one part coffee, 15 parts water. So we do all of our measurements in grams. So here I have 40 grams of coffee, which is about what I use when we're out at camp. So um, if we're doing, doing a pour over with 40 grams of coffee, 
that means we are gonna end up with 600 grams of water slash final product coffee. And 40 grams of coffee fits pretty well into this, um, into this little setup here. So again, this is all of our gear here. We've got the kettle, we've got the cone, and we've got the catcher, and we've got our scale. So I've teared this out to zero grams, and now I'm gonna dump my coffee in. So I've got every, everything set up here. I've got my coffee. Um, a lot of people will say to uh, pre-rinse the filter to uh, sort of get rid of that papery taste. I've noticed with the Kalita that it doesn't do super well when I pre-rinse it. Um, it sort of gets a little clogged. Um, I think because the paper is suctioning to these three holes down here at the bottom. So there's three little holes down here that allow the coffee to flow through. Um, I've had better, I've had success uh, not pre-rinsing it. I find that it, the coffee comes out much better. Um, the water runs through at a better rate. So um, I would not, if you're gonna go with this, don't pre-rinse your filters. Um, now that we have everything set up here, we gotta boil our water. So let's get everything set up for that. All right, so while we got the water boiling, I will talk about some of the other ways that I have tried making coffee at camp. Um, I've tried the AeroPress. Uh, I've tried using my V60. Uh, I've tried, I've used French press for a very long time. Just to say, I've tried lots of different ways of making coffee at camp. Some pros about this one, I think is, it's the fastest cleanup. Um, you know, you do your pour over, you get your coffee, you dump your paper in the trash and it's it's done. Um, with French press, it's a pretty messy uh, situation. You got a lot of coffee grounds down at the bottom. You got to waste a little bit of water to get it out of there. Let's also talk a little bit about water temperature. So if you have any sort of education about uh, making coffee, you know that water temperature is actually pretty important as well. Most folks don't recommend going over 205 Fahrenheit. Obviously, it's pretty difficult to regulate that when you're just boiling water on a stove, right? You can't really know um, what the temperature is unless you have a uh, thermometer. Um, a trick that I like to use is I let my water come to a boil. I let it sit for about 15 to 30 seconds and that has uh, yielded some pretty nice results for me. So um, that's typically what I do. Also, if you're here hanging out watching this, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you are enjoying this, it's helpful for you so far, please consider giving us a like on the video. It really does help us. We're here at the early stages of our YouTube channel, so every little bit helps. And I really, really appreciate everybody who has watched our videos and supported us so far. Okay, so our water's come to a boil. Uh, I turn the heat down. I'm gonna let the water rest for about 15 seconds. And then next step is we're gonna do a bloom. So let's turn on the scale, make sure we're at zero. Um, and when you do a coffee bloom, um, you wanna put about three times the amount of water as coffee grounds. So we have got 40, grounds, 40 grams of coffee in here. We're gonna put about 120 grams of water for the bloom. Then we're gonna let it sit for 30 seconds. So let's do that. I've got my water in here. I'm gonna like swish it around a little bit just to make sure all the grounds are getting saturated. We're gonna let it sit for about 30 seconds. I like to put the water back on uh, the heat just a little bit because I find that this um, aluminum kettle sort of loses heat pretty quickly. So I'll put it back on the heat for just a second. Then I'll cut the heat off and we'll finish out the pour over. I probably should have put a timer on, but it's fine. We're probably about 30 seconds right now. so. I'm gonna cut the heat off. Our water is at a good temperature. It's not boiling, it's just steaming a little bit. After that, we're gonna do slow circular motions until we hit 600 grams of, 600 grams of water. With this brewer in particular, it doesn't like to go super fast. So sometimes you might have to stop, put the water down, let the coffee sort of run through a bit and give it a little swirl every now and then. 
Now, like I said, when I'm at camp, I'm not trying to be super precise, so I don't always get it perfect, but it always comes out pretty good. All right, we are at 470 grams of water. I'm starting to overflow here a little bit, so I'll let that sit. Our goal here is 600, but I do like to go over a bit to about 620 uh, because you need to, uh, and there we go. Okay, we're actually at 630. So um, you have to account for uh, water retention by the grounds. So the grounds will just naturally retain a little bit of that water. So I go just a hair over my goal. So that way I'm getting the full amount of coffee that I am going for. All right, so as the coffee's coming down, we're gonna take it and just swirl a little bit. Your goal here is to have the coffee bed be totally flat. Um, if it's got a bunch of hills and mounds and stuff, uh, that doesn't saturate the grounds evenly, and then you're gonna get um, some coffee that tastes just a little bit off. Again, you may not notice if you're just getting into this, but um, once you start doing it a lot and you notice uh, some of that, and how that um, how the coffee bed really affects the flavor uh, you'll start to notice um, i've had plenty of pour overs where i just totally forgot that they were there uh, i come back and there's coffee grounds everywhere and it's just it depends on um, the type of coffee but sometimes it's really bitter sometimes it's super overpowered um, so you just want to make sure that you give it a little bit of a spin um, and shake it around a bit so the grounds sort of flatten out by themselves, the water can drain through, and then um, once you let it sit for a second, you're good to go. All right, we did it. That's what uh, the flat bed is supposed to look like there. Nice and flat. And we've got ourselves 600 grams of coffee. So let's pour it and taste it. Whew, that's hot. That's a good cup of coffee. This is our favorite coffee method at camp. It's pretty simple if you have all the stuff. Um, the kitchen scale is probably the thing most people will scoff at, but um, I would say if you really like having tasty coffee at camp, it makes a world of difference. It really, really does. Um, you know, most of the time, especially before I started really getting into coffee, I was just guesstimating. I was throwing some grounds into a French press and pouring some hot water in there and I was calling it good. And, you know, for the most part, especially before I started um, developing my palate for good coffee, it was fine. Um, I know there's a lot of folks out there that are probably going to come into the comments and say, uh, uh, instant coffee is totally fine. Why are you doing all this hippie crap? You can't knock it till you try it, old man. So try it. You'll probably like it. I'm not sure if people refer to uh, pour overs as hippie crap, but the Kalita wave is one of the best pour over methods for camp. In my opinion, um, you can certainly go the route of a V60. Uh, the V60 is much less forgiving. So any of those cone shaped pour over methods are going to be um, a little tougher to brew with um, just because it, it really requires super precise pouring and um, water temperature that is right on point. So, um, you know, I'm sort of guesstimating with all the water temperature and that sort of stuff. That's pretty much the only factor um, that is really a guess for me because um, I'm just looking at the kettle, seeing when it's boiling, letting it sit for 30 seconds and sort of just hoping that it's at the right spot. So with all that said, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it helps you uh, with your coffee at camp experience. I know that Kim and I both really look forward to having a great cup of coffee at camp. It's uh, definitely one of the things I really look forward to in the morning. It's a fun ritual um, and it just doesn't get any better than sitting in, in nature and having a nice cup of coffee, listening to the birds, hearing the trees rustle. Again, I hope you uh, enjoy the video. I hope you learned something. Um, if you did, hit that like button and uh, consider subscribing to our channel. We do a lot of really fun trips out here in the Pacific Northwest. Follow along with us. We've got some hopefully exciting news coming for the channel here uh, in the next couple of weeks. I'll keep you updated on that. But again, uh, I really appreciate you and um, I'll talk to you in the next one. Thanks for watching.